We did a study where we looked at individuals who were approaching um, emergency rooms because they had to get medical care and who were presenting without any health insurance, although they were Canadian residents. What we found was that, not to our surprise, people who don't have health insurance arrived at the emergency rooms sicker, they had more serious triage, but despite being sicker, they were less likely to be admitted, more likely to leave without having completed treatment, and more likely to die than those individuals who had insurance. Even though there was quite a bit of qualitative research demonstrating the effects of not being insured, to our knowledge, there was actually no other quantitative research that looked at the impact of being uninsured in Canada. The importance of this work is that it allows us to plan for responding to this particular vulnerable population's needs. You need to know how many people are affected. You need to know how they're affected in order to be able to respond appropriately. This gives us both the scope of the problem and the nature of the problems that people are dealing with, but it also allows us to estimate how many people are affected, which means we can cost it out. We looked at nine years of data from hospitals across Ontario. It is the biggest study we know of in Canada, and it tells us what people are coming in with in terms of diagnoses, how their uh, living conditions might be different. One of the things that we found, for example, is that we have a much higher rate of individuals with mental health concerns among the uninsured group than the insured group, which we think is evidence that they have nowhere else to go to get health care. The other difference that we found was that uh, we had a higher rate of women showing up in the hospital for obstetrics related issues. And this supports what we've seen in qualitative data that women are not getting prenatal care. So it's giving us data that is across the whole population, not just based on small pockets of individuals. I see this research as really part of York's leadership in the area of health equity and social determinants of health, thinking broadly about how policy and about how social conditions have an impact on health and well-being, particularly for vulnerable communities.